You're listening to the Vox Media Podcast Network. This is What the Heck with Mike Heck on MMAFighting.com. Now, here is your host, Mike Heck. What the heck? Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to a brand new edition of What the Heck here on MMAFighting.com. We have made it to December, everybody. Earlier this year, we all thought it would just take forever to get to the end of 2020 with the pandemic going on and all the craziness and all the negativity, but we made it. We're here. It is the holiday season, a lot of festive lights, a lot of big fights left on the calendar before we get to turn it on over to 2021 and take that 2020 calendar and just throw it in the trash, but we made it. So pat yourself on the back if you're watching and or listening right now. As we end in November with a pair of events, we had UFC Vegas 15 on Saturday night. Anthony Smith got back into the win column. Of course, he had the uh, we, we had the Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. event in the boxing ring, which was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that card. We talked all about that on Between the Links. I know it didn't uh, get up on YouTube. Casey is on vacation. That show is a lot more difficult to navigate from a production side. But we did our audio for that show. But if you haven't seen it, it's exclusively on the podcast network. It was Jed Mishu versus our old pal Sean Alshadi. An absolutely amazing battle. But you can get everyone's thoughts on those events right there. Casey's still on vacation, so bear with me. I'm the uh, the host, the producer, the editor, all that stuff. I'm putting this all together myself. So if I mess up, it doesn't look as good as it has in the past, which it probably won't. Casey, this is what he does, and he's the best of the business at doing it. Please be kind. Just please be kind. We do have a really fun show this week, so if there is any production things that are that are wrong, just enjoy the conversations because they're great. A lot of really solid guests, great conversations, and I do want to say we're after that before we run down the lineup. I appreciate all the great feedback from last week's episode, the special Thanksgiving edition of What the Heck. A lot of you enjoyed it, especially the interview with MJF from All Elite Wrestling. That was an amazing conversation. And I hope we're going to, I think pretty soon we're going to release that interview on its own. It's just been a crazy week, but uh, I thought it was a breath of fresh air, something a little bit out of the box, but I enjoyed that one for sure. The entire episode with Brandon Moreno and Rob Font and, and everybody else that was on the program. But let's talk about this week's show. Let us run down the lineup and get to our first guest. We're going to wrap things up with Montana De La Rosa. She returns to action this Saturday night against Talia Santos at UFC Vegas 16. Should be a fun one at 125 pounds. One of the nicest fighters on the UFC roster. Really enjoy this conversation. Excited to have Montana De La Rosa on the program for the first time. Also joining the show for the first time, the one heavyweight champion, Brandon Vera. Really, really love this chat. He'll be featured on the Apprentice One Championship Edition, which will drop on the One app pretty soon. I don't think they've actually released the actual date that's going to come out, but he's going to be on that. He's doing some movies. We're going to get an update on when he plans to defend his title once again. Talk Tyson versus Jones. Plus, he gives his thoughts about John Jones moving up to heavyweight in the UFC. And then he kind of takes us on this nostalgic trip through time from their fight at UFC on versus one. That was in March of 2010, over 10 years ago. But he remembers that fight like it's yesterday. He remembers like each and every piece of it and talked about how much it changed him. Like it really, it gave me chills, if we're being honest. It was really great stuff. I think you're going to enjoy that conversation with Brandon The Truth Vera coming up in a little while. Another Vera, Marlon Cheeto Vera, return, returns to the program. He's going to be fighting Jose Aldo on December 19th. That card is ridiculous, of course. It took a hit with Leon Edwards testing positive for COVID-19. Reports are out there. Got pretty bad. Lost 11 or 12 pounds. He got it real bad. So that fight with Hamzat Shamayev has been postponed. Wish him a speedy recovery. He's been on the show as well. Just a just a good dude. He's had a rough year. But even without that fight, still a really good card. New main event, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Jeff Neal. Loved that fight at 170. And this fight between Cheeto Vera and Jose Aldo is an excellent piece of business. I think this is superb perfection of matchmaking, if we're being honest. I don't like to throw out perfect or perfection out lightly. This, I think, was absolutely perfect. We'll get Marlon Vera's thoughts on that big fight at 135 pounds in around 25 minutes or so. 
that fight going down December 19th. But first, I wanted to do this, wanted to have this conversation because Saturday was just nuts for this man. I wanted to check in with the Trailblazer and a lot has changed for one of the breakout fighters of 2020. He was originally scheduled to headline the event this Saturday in Las Vegas against Jack Hermanson. That is no more, as you may have seen on the broadcast. He's got other plans. So let us kick off this week's episode of What the Heck with our old friend, UFC middleweight contender, Kevin Holland. All right, well, to say 2020 has been a crazy year for this man would be a giant understatement. Kevin Holland joins us right now, and to keep in line with the craziness of the year, last week ended with a little bit of a shakeup. He was scheduled to headline this Saturday's event against Jack Hermanson. We found out he tested positive for COVID-19, but it looks like he'll still have the chance to join that elusive 5-0 club as he's scheduled to face Jacare Souza December 12th at UFC 256. There's a lot to unpack here, Kevin. First off, good to see you, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you as well. How about you? How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, I, I guess the most important question of all is, how are you feeling right now with everything that has happened, not just physically with the COVID, but mentally with all the changes and everything that have happened here? <sighs> Another day in the office. <laughs> Another day in the office. It's all good in the hood. I'm loving it. You know what? Honestly, it's it's not a big deal, you know? Used to it. So we, we found out, like, early on Saturday that you had tested positive. When did you find out? Probably around the same time you guys found out. I um, Thanksgiving was, what, Thursday? So I think I found out Friday, Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon. Were there, like, symptoms or anything? Did, did you take the test on your own, or was this, like, the UFC test that you had to take before you travel? So UFC sent the test. Uh, and we take it before we travel, took the test. Uh, I had like a minor cold, a couple snivels and stuff like that. And then uh, I was like, oh, you know, we're like probably allergies, you know, season change. And then, uh, you know, took the test, came back. I had COVID. I was like, wow, this is COVID? I was like, no way. There's no way this could be COVID. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, here I am. So, yeah, I think I found out Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Which You're- sucked because I had people at the house, you know what I mean? Not a lot, but, you know, it's like I had my mom's husband here, my mom's here, you know, and it was just like, you know, my uh, old lady's dad was here. It was just like, all right, so now we have to call them and let them know, you know, and it's like uh, somehow, some way, you know. You're, you're obviously taking this in stride just another day at the office, like you said, but when you found out that it was COVID, like how did you react to that because you knew that things were going to change for like- you? So I can't fight with a mask on? What's up? <laughs> I was like, uh, is there any way we can go around this? Do you want to retest? Is there anything we can do? But no, ultimately, there was a uh, – that was it, you know? So uh, I kind of understood what was going on, and I was just like – it took me a day. Like, the next day, I was just like – hit, hit Orin up, manager, and I was just like, yo, what's the verdict? So, like, do I fight – another week against jack but i fight somebody else like uh there's still a couple cards for december's over with you know it takes two weeks they say it's out your system i'm like shit when's my two weeks you know what i mean <laughs> like when can i fight again like i'll train in the garage what's up what you got for me i don't want to end the year like this I just spent all this money on cars let's, let's make some more dough you know? <laughs> And, and and I, I reacted like obviously I was I, I felt for you and then to find out that your old pal Marvin Vittori was stepping in to take the fight it just kind of came full circle based on like all of our conversations this year how'd you feel about about Marvin stepping in and getting that I shot was, I was proud of him you know it's like I mean it sucks that I can't go fight you know main event but at the end of the day checks a check you know what I'm saying so it's like you get a little bit more for main event in the card but you know that's whatever make it up in some uh, sideline sponsor money you know, so it is what it is. Um, just make you grind a little harder. But to see Marvin step up and take the fight, I was like, dang, why didn't he take the fight before? You know what I mean? Like, I know it had to be offered to him before it was offered to me. It's probably one of those five to turn down, but props to him. I'm glad he stepped up, had some, had some, some, what do they call it in Spanish? Cuevos, you know what I mean? Stepped up in there, got the job done. You know what I mean? So, win, lose, or draw. You know, he gets he gets brownie points for me uh, for being a man. And then I checked his age, and I was like, oh, dude, he's a little younger than me. I was like, no wonder why he acts the way he acts. I was like, what? He's <laughs> finally becoming a man. I'm proud of him. Good job. <laughs> so, uh, Rob Samarvin Vittori, you know what I mean? Hats off to him. You know, if he goes out there and, do, and does what I would have did, then, you know, he gets the job done. 
he goes out there and looks how he looks in his last fight, it won't look too good then. It, it was interesting because I, I thought your year was kind of shut down here. I mean, you, 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 knowing you, like you said, you, you called your manager. You're like, how can we get this, get another fight in before the year is over? And I'm watching the event this past Saturday along with the Tyson Jones card. And then Brendan Fitzgerald's on the screen and, and – announces the change for the main event this Saturday, and then he reveals that you're going to fight Jacare at UFC 256. And I think a lot of people were surprised that by that. I, I have to admit that I didn't see that one coming so quickly, especially the same day we found out about the original change. How did that happen? Like, was it just like one fell swoop, or did this come together afterwards? Like, when did Orn kind of present this to you? It was, you know, I, I'd be messaging Mick back and forth on Instagram, trying to get on his nerves <laughs> so I can get extra fights and stuff. I just... I'm just bugging people, you know what I mean? Trying to get what I can get. And uh, Mick's always so cool about it. You know, shouts out to Mick Maynard for just always keeping it so player, so cool. You know, just a dope guy, super dope guy. I've always thought he was a dope guy ever since Legacy. But, uh, yeah, so I was messaged Mick like, uh, what's up? And he was like, so what's up? You want to take the Jacare fight or what? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> why, why not? He's like, you sure you're feeling okay? I'm like, man, I feel fine. I was like, what do you want me to do to prove it to you? Let me know. Like, of course I'll take the Jacare fight. I was like, I'll gladly, I'll gladly become the alligator catcher overnight. You know what I'm saying? So here we are. You know, now I got to go out there and become an alligator catcher overnight. Which I, you know, I used to take little trips in uh, to Louisiana out here from Texas to Louisiana in my old town car back in the day just to get a drive in. So. Yeah, it's the same deal. Now I'm just riding to Las Vegas like it's a swampland and catching me an alligator, <laughs> a legendary alligator at that. I'm loving it. Ba da ba ba ba. I'm <laughs> loving it. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I feel great, man. If anything, I feel better than I did before. Uh, just, I guess it's a quick glimpse of like how you started to not pay attention to what COVID was doing to everything. You kind of just started zero. I started zeroing in on everything I had going and stopped worrying about the other stuff. But you have to pay attention to COVID, you know, it's like you have to pay attention to what's going on in the road. And uh, I started taking it lightly. And so I guess it just opened my eyes, you know, do what I got to do. Uh, I'm actually getting some mats built for the for the for the house, for the garage. And I say COVID center on there. So uh, <laughs> remind me never to forget. You know what I mean? Be smart about this. So, yeah, missed out on, on that fight, but now we got Jacare, and Jacare's a legend. If I may say so myself, I'm more excited about the Jacare fight than I was about Jack. I wasn't even excited about Jack. I was excited about a main event. But Jack, good guy, but I wasn't that excited about him. Now, Jacare, I'm excited about the Jacare fight. Why were you excited about Jack? Highly ranked guy? It, you know what? It puts me up in the rankings, and then it means I can't have fun. You know what I mean? It means that I have to do uh, all these things where – it was like you beat him and then more likely more fights were going to be main event and they were going to put more camera time on you and it was going to take more publicity to get you in fights and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it was a, a bigger package. Beating Jacare, I still get to have fun for a little bit longer. You know what I'm saying? I can still step in, take last second fights, do this, do that. And I like that. So you just got, kind of wanted this to slow it down just, just a tad? No, I was down. I'm down for whatever at the end of the day. I'm down for whatever. But, uh, it's just a Jacare fight. It makes more sense to me, you know. And it's like I wasn't even ranked, you know. So now I can jump into the rankings, and you know, I don't have to. I don't have to be high ranked. It could put me in right there at fifteen. I'm from sixteen right now. I can go to fifteen. I can fight, like I said before, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, and I can do it all on last second. I don't care. But it just gives me a chance to fight, you know, multiple times. Think about it. If I knock out five fights during a pandemic year, I did it in seven months. Imagine what I could do with a full twelve. That's true. That's a good way of looking at it. Is there, I know you're taking, you may have taken the COVID thing a little lightly. And I think there's a lot of people who, who are doing that even right now, but is there like a small part of you that's, I know it sucks to get COVID and you miss out on the opportunity, but you get a more exciting fight. But is there a little like relief to it now that like you got it and it's over and done with now in a way? No, it's not, that's a, that's a sad part about it. I used to play like that when it first came out. I used to be like, well, it's like chicken pox. If you get it, you can't get it again. Maybe I should just get it, get it over with so it won't interrupt any fights. Nah, you shouldn't play like that. Because you never know who you can give it to, you know, and you never know who could become worse off of it. You know, and it's like, um, A, it may not be hurting me, but let's say this happened and I was around my grandparents or, you know, let's say my kid caught it. You know, let's say somebody in the house really, really took a dive off of it. That would have sucked. Yeah. You know, that would have, that would have hurt, 
you know, so it's nothing to play with, you know, and it's like some people aren't doing so well. Leon Edwards, four days, you know, they say lost 11 pounds, you know, and it's like uh, being an athlete, losing 11 pounds, that's uh, that's not nothing to play with. You know, your body is, is your tools and that's something to work with. So when you see something like that happening to somebody and uh, it's not happening to you, you're kind of like thankful that it's not. But at the same time, it reminds you why you shouldn't play with something like this. You know, it's like you, you have to take it serious. You know, you have to you have to follow the protocols, even if the protocols don't make sense. You know, you have to follow them, you know, just just to try and be a little bit more safe. Stay at home. You know, it's like all year, all year I was going ham. You know, it's like uh, I was going ham with my mask on. I was going ham. I put gloves on. You know, it's like I was taking advantage of it. I was still going out and doing things and other people were scared to do things. Uh, But in the beginning of the year, I didn't have my full family living with me. And it's like things changed throughout the course of the year. Now I have to stay at home and be a little bit more safe. I can't be hitting the mall and having fun. Just because I said that, you little trolls don't go on my page and say that shit back to me. I I swear I'll go off on you. But. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's just the truth. You have to be careful with this. I don't want to ramble on with it too much, but you definitely have to be careful. Am I getting more time at home? Do I get to play my video game a little bit more than I was before? Yes, sir. But uh, still, nothing to, nothing to want to wish on anybody or wish on yourself. So what's like a typical day like for you now, now that you're at home? Like, I assume that you're training at home. That's how you're going to have to spend the, the, the remainder of this camp? Yeah, just... Buying more stuff to make the house better, you know, like order stuff online. Uh, I got my coach, my strength and conditioning coach, CD Power Train. Shout out to Shug. I'm running around like a madman. People always talk about him because he does so much for me, but uh, that's what a good friend is for. That's what a good coach is for. That's what a good uh, partner in crime is for. That's my dog right there, you know. He goes out there and he goes and gets me everything I need for the garage. You know, we make some phone calls. We set up some things. My guy Jason at the gym sets me up with some mats. Like, they'll be coming this week. It's like, just knowing that I'm about to have a little mini uh, gym in the garage, it takes me back to like when I originally started, you know, my grandma and grandpa, my grandpa was always about fitness and they had like their own little, you know, gym in the garage. They didn't have these type of mats and they didn't have this type of equipment, but uh, it's going to be sick. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> sick. It's going to be better than some gyms I've ever been to. So a little three car garage and taking half of it and hooking it up for that. Still got a spot for my old school and my motorcycle. I'm good to go. There you go. Uh um- like like we mentioned at the top, you know, it's it's just been a crazy year for you, and you've rolled with the punches as well as anybody has in the UFC. And you know, short notice fight here, new opponent a few days before a fight there. You're slotted in here, and now you're on this card. With everything going on and and COVID and everything, are you just kind of playing the act as if game, like roll with it as as if everything's going to play out perfectly? Then if something happens, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Like, how are you sort of handling this? Because I don't know if you can can you confidently say that. 100% you're going to fight Jacare on December 12th? No, you cannot say 100% accurately that you're going to fight Jacare December 12th. You know, it's like, a, that's the crazy thing about this year. You can never for say 100% if you're going to do something uh, that it's for sure going to happen. You know, it's like, uh, you put your word out there, you'd be lying to put your word out there half the time, you know. Unless you're Dana White, then you're just pulling shit, pulling miracles off, you know. And that's, that's, uh, that's a different story. And it's like, I don't have that much power in this world yet. I can't control whether Jacare will stay healthy and I can't control whether or not I'll pass every COVID test that they have. If it's in my system, then it's in my system and I can't control what tests pick it up, what tests don't, right? But I can stay ready so that way I don't have to get ready. And when December 12th comes around, I will be ready. And then if December 12th doesn't work out, you know, it's like, I'll try and get on December 19th. It's like, I don't cut no weight to get the 185. So it's not a big deal. You know, it's like, I'm going to keep shooting for the stars until I hit. And then after that, I'll shoot a little further. And it's like, uh, and then let's say the fight does happen December 12th. My job is to go out there, knock that out the ballpark. Such great fashion that, uh, quote, unquote, the guy that everybody calls the last second king, Kazmat, you know, hopefully he wants to step up within a week's notice and take back his main event slot. But let's see how much clout I get after this one. Because you all know, ain't nobody fighting nobody if they ain't got the clout, right? That's very true. That's very true. But Unless you- you're me. Then you just fight everybody, and everybody. <laughs> guys who show up on their first day at the job, smoke them. Even though you're supposed to be fighting somebody else, still smoke them like a blunt. That's what I do. I smoke them like a blunt. If I say I'm going to smoke them, I smoke them like a blunt. Damn. L's to the face, baby. This is a fun fight, man. I mean, you, you said you're going to have a lot of fun in there, more than you probably would have had with Jack, in, in your opinion. And, yeah. you know, Jacare's been a perennial contender at 185 for, for so long. I've been watching Jacare forever. 
you know, he's been he he's he's been in there with pretty much everybody at this point. And yeah, he's getting up there in age, but man, this he is just, a really uh, solid name on the resume, is it not? Yeah, he just he just went the distance with the two oh five champ not too long ago. That's right. right. You know, uh both his last losses came by what, split decision, and then the fight that he won before that, he won by knockout against what, Chris Wyman in the last round. This guy's always dangerous, always has been, always will be. I don't care how old he is. But uh, you know. We'll see if age has caught his caught his number yet, and if it hasn't, we'll see if I've caught his number. And I'm pretty sure I can catch anybody's number in the road. So, put me in the right spot at the right time with the right mentality, and uh, it's going down. And I got the right mentality going into this fight. So, stay healthy, stay right, and I'm gonna be an alligator catcher that night. Can I ask you about that Instagram post you put out a couple weeks ago? You, you, Which one? You, the video you said. Well, looks like I'm not fighting on on December 5th, and you had I didn't everybody. Say not fighting. I said I looks like I will not see you guys December. That's 5th. right. That's right. That's right. I I, I apologize for 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 yes, mixing the yes, words up. Yes. But. They, and then everybody went crazy, and they said, "Oh, he's not fighting December 5th." And then <laughs> look, here it came. I didn't fight December 5th. That sucks, right? No. So when I was like, "Oh, I won't be seeing you guys December 5th," it was perfect. It was perfect because I won't be seeing anybody December fifth, but they'll all be seeing me on ESPN. But I didn't get to I didn't get to work it out. So I had bought this cool little mask, right? I had everybody all gamed up and everything. Bought this cool little mask, right? This mask right here costs freaking hundred and something dollars, you know, after taxes about one fifty, close to one sixty. They were going with this little anime theme, you know, me being Batman and him being Joker. I was going to put the mask on. I was going to highlight it up, throw some smog in the background, throw a badass little highlight video behind it. The eyes light up red in the dark, and uh, you could take the face off, put the face back on. And I was going to say, see you soon, Jack. Then I was going to be like, of course you won't see me December 5th. <laughs> I'll be seeing you guys. Well, of course I won't see you guys December 5th because you'll be seeing me. And then I was going to put the mask back on, eyes light up red, smoke everywhere. It was going to be some dope shit. <laughs> but it didn't work out caught COVID-19 in 2020. It's a great idea, though. That, that thing would have been great. Still might do it. You I still might should. Still go on, like the ultimate alligator catcher. <laughs> Not again. I got to do it. I got to do it, right? I spent $139 on this mask. Came up to about $150 after taxes. Yeah, I got to put it on. I got to rock it. Any, uh, any movement on the video game yet? On, uh, on the you, know what? Game? My, you know what? I'm hearing the game's trash. I haven't played it, but I'm hearing the game's trash, right? So if the game's trash, I don't want to be on it. But, <laughs> but, but, if you're out there in this world and you haven't bought UFC 4, go buy it ASAP. Support the company. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That's the way to do it. Are you paying attention to, like, the fighter of the year stuff? Like, because I know Shamayev is right up there. With the champ. The-, the champ. The champ gets it. The champ gets it. Uh, if he fights uh, December 12th, same time that I'm fighting, uh, my bad, my bad. Okay. If he fights December 12th, the same time that I'm fighting, defends his belt the third time, right, or the second time, got it, defended it all in one year, right, back-to-back title defenses in a pandemic, and I'm talking about a couple weeks later, hands down, that man gets fighter of the year. Like uh, DC said on one of them, when you're the champ, it's a little bit it's a little bit uh, hard to go against the champ, right? Well, that's a champ that's put in work during a pandemic year. Hands down, that man gets it. And then I think everybody has forgot about what Gilbert Burns did in the beginning of the year. It's not his fault he didn't get a chance to go out there and possibly capture the title. And I'm at, man, let me say this. He would have captured the title. You know, it's like uh, Usman don't be representing, you know, the DFW enough. So, you know, fuck him. Uh, He definitely would have got the title. So shout out to... Shout out to my man over there. Uh, you know, he would have got the title. So he would have whooped Usman. Gilbert Burns would have whooped Usman. He would have got the title, and he would have been fighter of the year. So, yeah, I think I give it to Diego. Uh, I had a, a hell of a year with five runs, and then beating a guy like Jack Ray would be nice. But had I smoked Jack and then stepped up and beat Kazmat on the 19th, that would have been magical. But uh, it didn't work out that way, right? So happens, I'll beat this man, and then maybe they'll take off that Pettis Moreno fight and put me versus Kazman on the nineteenth because I can go back to back like that because you guys know me, and then I'll get fighter of the year. But other than that, the champ deserves it one hundred percent. Fair enough. How do we? Uh, at least for the break. I mean, breakout fighter of the year. You're you're right up there. You and that's Kazman. 
That's Hamza? You think so? Look how many followers he got. He came into the game, turned things upside down. Uh, he did his thing. Yeah, I'm not a hater by any means. He did his thing. So breakout fighter of the year, you can definitely you can definitely give that to him. Or rookie of the year. You know, it's like I don't know if they do that or not. You know, it's like if you just really want to give me something, you know, uh, give me OG of the year. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> give me OG of the year. The guy who just kept going when nobody else wanted to. I like that, man. How, how do we get this thing done against Jacare on December 12th? Hands and feet. Hands and feet. But don't get it twisted, though. Don't get it twisted. I hear everybody always talking about if it goes to the ground, Kevin Holland is done. Yeah, I've been rear naked choked by Rafael Lovato Jr. Step in there against Rafael Lovato Jr. You'll probably get rear naked choked, too. Uh, Brandon Allen. Shouts out to Brandon Allen. I'll take nothing away from him, but I slipped on a banana peel. Uh, Jacare, don't get it twisted, man. Jacare can get finished in any way, any shape, any fashion. I can hurt him and sub him. I can slam him on his neck and finish him, right? I've done that before. I mean, what haven't I done? You know, it's like uh, I'm going there and I'm fighting a, a veteran. I'm fighting an a OG in the game. I'm fighting, you know, somebody who's had a belt in a lot of organizations, just not the UFC. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to have a great time. This is exactly what I was asking for. This is exactly what I was asking for last time. I, and this is exactly what I've been begging my managers and everybody for. You know, I couldn't remember what legends were left. You know, sad that I forgot about Jacare, a legend in Jacare. I'm going to go out there and take him out. You know, remember how John Jones was coming through and he was taking out all those legends? I mean, taking them out. I mean, just completely destroying them. You know, I'm going to do that without the pick, though. <laughs> who, uh, who do you think wins this weekend? <laughs> um, I got Jack. I got Jack. You know, I like Marvin uh, stepping up last second like that. I like Marvin stepping up last second like that. But like I said, if it has, if it performs anything like he did his last fight, he was kind of in a rear naked choke position against Carl Robertson, right? If Jack puts him in that position and him trying to do that uh, muscle flail out thing that he did last time, it's not gonna work. Uh, props for him for having some. Uh, Quibbles? 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 Yeah. Sh- shouts out for him having some quibbles, but uh, uh, nah. That for, yeah, I don't I don't see him beating Jack. If he beats Jack, shouts out to him, but I don't see him beating Jack. Plus, Jack just seems ready this time. He just mentally seems like he's down for whatever. That's why me and Jack would have made a fun fight, because mentally we were both down for whatever. Did you watch uh did you watch Tyson Jones on Saturday? Yeah, I did. Actually I caught it later in the fight. It was awesome. You see him fake that roundhouse kick? <laughs> uh, you know what and then tyson's ability to get over under i don't know if a lot of people paid attention to that but anytime he gets in a clinch position he grabs over underhook he grabs an underhook and an overhook so fast it's almost like if he was to transition and do a uh a, a mma fight he might be hard to take down you know it's like he squares up a lot but he might be hard to take down because that over under who knows i'm not the best wrestler in the world <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy it though I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it a lot. I don't remember. I don't ever remember watching Tyson live. I'm pretty sure my mom and them recorded it while I was a youngster. Uh, So watching him live on my little app. My app was tripping on my phone. I should have actually downloaded the app instead of just doing it live and ran on the phone. But, uh, dude, it was amazing to watch. I don't care if I had to rewind it fast forward, rewind fast forward, rewind fast forward. I would have did that all night to watch Tyson fight. So uh, I know we're not supposed to preach promoting all the old guys out there scrapping, but for me to be able to see Tyson fight, you know, like that, that's awesome, you know. And shout out to the Arch Imnus, Stylebender, being there live, live, dickhead. I was going to say, what did you think? I, I thought he did a great job. I thought he did I thought, a, he was I great. I thought he did a great job. I didn't think he got no love from Snoop Dogg like he wanted, but I thought he did a good job. <laughs> I was snooped I out. I would have not laughed that hard when, she, when he said that's what she said. I would have been like. <laughs> but shout out to him for taking it well. Raw dog style. Did you <laughs> did you like did you like hearing Snoop on the broadcast? Like I he was yeah, it was, I love it was your Snoop, bro. I'm a fan of all the OGs, bro. So yeah, I liked it on the Contender series. A lot of people didn't like it. I loved him on the Contender series. I thought him and Ryan was dope. I like Snoop. I'm a big fan of Snoop. I got a story about that. You know, we'll save that for another time. Oh come Snoop. on, come no, on, man. That's inappropriate. It's not PG thirteen. <laughs> You're you're out here telling people you're gonna smoke Jacare like a blunt. Ah, yeah, I know, huh? 
But if you think about it, that's 420 friendly. That's true. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But uh, listen, you're the man, Kevin. It's been it has been a lot of fun watching you do your thing this year and, and break out the way that you have. And I'm glad you're you're feeling better and hope all goes well for you ahead of UFC 256, man. All the best to you, my man. And uh, and we'll see you in there against Jacare. Thank you. And look, look, it's still pending a nose wipe. But if that nose wipe don't go well, I'm down to fight in one of those uh, hazard suits. Bio. <laughs> Let's do it. And if not, back, put us in put us in saran wrap bubbles and we can go at it. I'm down for whatever. Don't if, short me out of that five and zero this year. And if not, we'll see you December nineteenth then, right? Yeah, one way or another, you will see me. Everything that has happened and all these changes, the man has taken it all in stride. No doubt about that. Kevin Holland scheduled to face Jacare Souza at UFC 256 on December twelfth, the final pay per view event. For the UFC of 2020, that one's headlined by Davis and Figueiredo versus Brandon Moreno for the UFC Flyway title. Both guys coming back on three weeks' notice after their wins at UFC 255. If you haven't seen my chat with Brandon Moreno, head back into the archives. You don't have to go too far because he was on the show last week, but Brandon Moreno, the assassin baby, one of my favorite fighters to interview in 2020. No doubt about that. Let us move to the Bantamweight division. Huge fight at 135 coming up on December 19th against a former longtime UFC featherweight champion. In my opinion, he's top five, top 10 greatest of all time. I don't think Jose Aldo gets mentioned enough in those greatest of all time conversations, but Marlon Vera is going to have the opportunity to face that man on the final UFC event of the year. So back on the show, Cheeto Vera, here he is. All right, the UFC's final card of the year is on December 19th. It is a ridiculous card, and it got even more ridiculous with the addition of a bantamweight matchup between Jose Aldo and this man back on the show, Marlon Cheeto Vera. Marlon, good to see you, man. How are you? Good to see you, brother, too. I'm good. Uh, Turning in the morning. Right now, I'm going with my wife to pick up my daughter in school, and life is good, you know. Um, I'm, I'm blessed I have I have the chance to work and in this crazy year you know many people lose jobs many people life just get fucked over I'm so lucky the UFC is, pro- is, is is helping me I can provide for my family because without UFC we all are fucked so thanks UFC let's start with that yeah well said uh, I mean this this is something else Marley because this is like you said 2020 has just been a crazy year and it's been a crazy year for you because it started off with that controversial decision loss to Song Yudong. You go on to hand Sean O'Malley his first loss, which sort of catapulted you to another level. And now you're going to fight Jose freaking Aldo to cap it off. Like things can change and evolve rapidly in the sport. And you are big time proof of that. Are you not? Um, I, I always tell people like life is a trip. You know, one, one day you might be down and the next day without, you knowing, you're, you're, you're fucking rocking up. So, it's all about it's all about energy. It's all about how you keep your mind, how you keep your your mindset, your work ethic. Because you know, in MMA in specific, life is so crazy. You know, you can lose three fights, then you won one, somebody get hurt, and all of a sudden you are you're catching a, a great fight, and nobody even knew you were supposed to be there. But it, it's life, you know. And and I just. I, I mentally stay positive. I mentally stay sharp the whole time. And yeah, I started the year very shitty. Uh, corona hit right before that. We all were scared. It was all panicking and bullshit. And guess what? You just, you just say fuck it and you just keep going forward and, and you find a way to, to make it happen because there's, there's always a way. There is just people that don't want to put enough energy and effort into things. And I always think like that. There's always a way. So... Worst of the worst, it didn't go my way. I will never regret anything because I know I'm putting everything on every single day just to make sure I keep my goals and I, I make, I'm making it happen for me and my family. Yeah, and, and you've, you've, you've shown a lot this year for sure. I mean, after the win over O'Malley, the, the buzz just sort of continued on and, you know, the, the, the saga between you and O'Malley kind of moved on because Sean continued to talk about you. You addressed it enough, but it certainly has fizzled out at this point at least for the time being that chapter in your career is behind you that has to be refreshing ahead of this fight like i'm sure you're going to get asked about it at the media day and such but it has to be a refreshing feeling knowing that the page is officially turned from you and sean o'malley at this point right um uh, for me it's, fighting is just for me fighting is one night you know we we go we're going there we, we i make sure i get that double check and 
after that, I can care less about you. Like, even if, even if, even if you beat me, the next day I'm over. Like, what, what I can fucking do? Go to your house, knock your door, and tell you I want to fight you. I ain't fighting for free. Don't get me wrong. If there's a chance to fight you again, if, if the UFC come like, hey, you want this rematch? I'm like, fuck, yes, maybe. Like, you, you gotta see if, where you are at that moment and if that's what is convenient for you. But, like, for example. If they, if they will come in right now, like, hey, son, you don't need an opponent. I'm like, fuck yeah, I fuck him up again. Why not? But if they call me for some fight that I'm like, nah, it's okay. I'm like, it's okay. He beat me. Good for him. Go. God bless you. I, I like, if you go see the, at the beginning of my UFC career, the guys that beat me at the beginning, where they are, where I am. Why do you want to change that rematch with somebody that is dead? So, fuck it. Fair enough. I remember we, we spoke like a couple of days after that win and you listed off a few names that you thought made sense for you next. Jimmy Rivera was kind of the one that everyone sort of put their finger on. You seem to have wanted that fight. You mentioned Jose Aldo as well. You shot for the stars a little bit and now you're going to fight him on December 19th. When you found out that Aldo was the guy, how did you react to that? I kind of knew a little bit before we talked, like Aldo was in the conversation, Cruz was in the conversation. Rivera was in the conversation because everybody knows he will he will run away from me his whole life so I, I i passed that already months ago years ago but uh with aldo they told me like, hey there's a big chance you can fight him like you're coming off a big win he is lost for the title so it's kind of like a fight that makes sense i'm a fucking nerd so i, I can see how things work in the ufc so that's a chance for him to prove he can still beating the up the up and comers and it's a fucking chance for me to send him home and be like, hey, hey, motherfuckers, I'm going to be a world champion right now. So we both have a big opportunity, and I'm not going to let it off the hook. So when it called me, like, hey, all this guy, I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Like, let's do it tomorrow. Um, so I'm, I was excited. I was I was as happy as any other fight. When they call me, there's fight, I'm excited because there's a chance to show my improvements. There's a chance to climb the ladder. And there's a chance, there's a chance to put in a fucking hell of a fight. And... I love that. I love that we're locked in a cage and somebody's gonna 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 cry and somebody's gonna laugh afterwards. And it just excited me, it excited me a lot to be in that position and against somebody like that. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Yeah, wor- worse places to be in your career than having your options be Dominic Cruz and Jose Aldo coming off of a win over Sean O'Malley, right? I mean, man, you must that's got to tell you something about how the UFC views you too. Like they obviously have a lot of faith in you and they see a lot in you to to put you in this position, right? I still don't even know why they make that that, that, that was probably the worst match for him, you know. But they call me, you want to fight that guy? I'm like, fuck yeah, I fight that guy. I fight that guy or any other one, like that after I beat him, Dana told me one thing. He's like, hey, kid, you never refuse a fight. I'm like, I will never fucking refuse a fight. Like, like for me, it's not about, like, oh, these guys, style is not good for you. Like, oh, these guys do that. Like, I'm a fucking fighter. I'm going to fight my ass off against anybody. I don't care if you're a wrestler, karate kid, you're a boxer. I'm a fighter. And I train every single area to make sure... I'm not just a one-dimensional guy, and I prove it. I, I submit guys, I beat up guys, I kick guys, I punch guys. I'm not, I'm not a master at anyone, but I'm pretty damn good at every single area. So, and there's something that is really important, and people don't 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 realize that. It's not just me knowing technique. It's a fight that is in me. It's it's the hunger I have inside me. Like I always want more. I will always will to put my everything on the line in order to make it happen. So. You know, it's called it's gonna be a it's gonna be a motherfucker. I'm ready to go at any time of the year. I train hard. I have great coaches and good energy around me. And I always said it's all about energy. Does this one feel any different to you, or does it feel like any other fight? It's it's just another day in the office. It's just a different day. It's December 19, and it's a fucking fight. And when they lock the cage, and after Bruce is is out of the cage. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go and fight my ass off and I'm willing to hurt this guy and I'm willing to take it in order to win. So I'm I'm not gonna shy away and like a, like a, like a samurai say like I, I'm accepting that in order to to achieve victory and I'm I'm not, I'm not fucking around with that. I'm I'm gonna be the last guy that I'm gonna left anything off the hook. So I'm coming. I'm and I'm coming in the heart. Like that was my post when I. When I announce the fight, I'm coming in hot. I'm coming in red fucking hot. 
He obviously longtime champion at 145, dropped to 35, had the very close fight with Maron Marias, fought Piotr Jan for the title in July, got finished in that one. But Aldo was certainly competitive for a good chunk of that fight. So, you know, you said you're a, you're a nerd. You, you pay attention to what's going on in your division and around the sport. What have you made of Aldo at 135 and how he's performed at this new weight class? He, he's a fucking great fighter. He's he, he's a tough guy. He's not an easy match for nobody. He's been fighting huge guys his whole career, so I'm not thinking he's gonna be any different than a than a hard fight. So I train hard. I make sure I do everything possible. I can train. I can work. I, I can improve. I can make questions to my coaches like, how I can improve? How I can be this guy? And I ask them separately, and they might make up my mind. I'm like, okay, like this makes sense. It's pretty hard to me. Like, hey, coach, I don't think I like that, but I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm an open book and. I let them write everything they want, and then you know I take what's the best of it. And I just wake up every morning thinking there's something to be done. So I'm always busy. I'm always training, and I'm and I'm lucky my family understand. You know, my wife understand, my kids understand because it's for them. Like I'm not trying to win a fight because it's cool to win. Fuck, who likes fighting? It's stressful. And then you don't know when you're fighting, blah blah blah. You you, you might get hurt. But I, at the same time, I love it. And it's for them, and I love them more than than I love myself. So it's for my family. So I wake up every morning thinking I need to do something, and it's gonna be a hell of a fight. The guy is tough. The guy is good, and he's good everywhere too. So we're gonna have a, a great fight. Yeah, it's it's a little different a different setup from the O'Malley fight because the O'Malley fight was you know it was all about the hype. Can he get over this next level? There's a little bit of trash talk. There's some gamesmanship with the hair. This fight builds itself. We don't need any extra shenanigans. There's no trash talk. Just two high-level fighters getting in there, and they're going to fight, and you guys are going to see who the better man is. How much are you looking forward to this fight week where it's just about the fight and not about any of, any of the other BS? Uh, I'm cool with, with both. I'm cool with the quiet guy, and I'm cool with the, with, with the, with the loud guy because at the end of the day, we're going to be locking the cage. And again... It's all when mental games can, comes in, in, in the table and you see who's the real deal because how many guys lost the fight before they walk in? How many guys are already, like, consumed about it? Like, Aldo McGregor. Aldo walked to that cage, lost. He, he, he went to that cage, like, already giving up. So I'm not that person, you know. If you talk shit to me, I can play the game. If you don't talk shit to me, I can care less. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to kill you anyways. I'm, I'm not here to make friends and be cool with anybody. I'm here to make money and one day become a world champion. And if I have to fight hard for that, I'm down for that. So it's, it's the same for me. It's just another day in the office and whoever is in front of me is going to be for a long night. You're you're riding this this nice wave of momentum right now heading into this fight. And Aldo, of course, has lost three in a row and, and five of his last seven. And, you know, there's some people in this you know, the fans especially can be a little fickle and they're like, oh, Marlon's fighting Jose Aldo. He's lost three in a row. It's not the biggest deal. But to me, I look at it differently. I feel like regardless of where Aldo is at in his career, this is a very important fight for him. You're probably going to see the very best Jose Aldo that we've ever seen in the octagon because his back's against the wall and there's a little extra pressure on him. Do you feel that way as well, that you're going to see the very best Jose Aldo we've seen? I hope so, so I can I can see where I am. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna just push every single limit that I have on myself, and I'm gonna break this guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna just walk through him, and I'm not just talking. I'm gonna do it. Like I'm gonna go like I go in every single fight. I'm gonna go and fight like a fucking motherfucker. I'm gonna put it on him. Have Have you thought about where a win over Jose Aldo can take you in your career? Like you go from you know, a ranked guy to a title contender in a matter of months. Like, have you allowed yourself to think that far and envision where a win can take you, especially if you do something impressive in there? A hundred percent. I already, I already see myself knocking that door, but you know, first things first, you're going to go and beat the guy. And you know, first things first, you, you got to beat the guy, but I already have the picture in my mind. I already know what I will say when I win. I know who I'm going to ask for when I win. And, it's all about that. It's all about like winning first. But you know, you can make all the trash talk. You can get all the hype in the world. You lose the fight, and people won't believe your bullshit. So I keep it very honest in that sense. And fight and win first. You need to win. You can talk. You can be confident, but 
no one cares when you lost, so you better win. And I'm, I'm walking to that cage confidence I can win. Hola, Anita. So you already have a name ready to go. You don't have to tell me now, obviously, because you won't, I'm uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do have the names in my head, you know. You, you, you beat the guy that just fought for the title. Uh, like, I, I can care less if he lost two in a row. He just fought for the title, so that put me right there in the line. So, first is first. I go, put this guy out, and, and then I call my shots. Do you have a, an official prediction here? Like, obviously, you're not going to say Jose is going to win, but... Do you see yourself getting the finish? Do you see a specific way? Like, are, are we even thinking about that at this point in your career? I'm going to stop him. I'm going to stop him. There's, there's no doubt I'm not going to do it, you know. I worked I worked too hard for, for, for just going there. And this is the fight that I need to show. What I've been, what I've been showing in the last seven or five fights. I was going to go in there and just, just, just push it until it breaks. And... You won't keep up with me. I know that because I know how hard I push myself. And I always find people better than me so I can push extra. I'm never with the same circle and like, oh, if I beat you, I only go with you. I'm always looking for people that kick my butt so I can be better. And that's what I've been doing. And that's why I can push it forward in the fight. That's why I can give that little extra mile in there because I'm always looking for a way to be better before the fight happens because... It's so easy to get comfy and train with the same guy every day. And then, you know, you get used to that guy. You know what this guy is going to do to you. I'm always looking for, for like, brand new opponents in the gym so I can get better. Because that's what you really need. And then I'm always asking to my coaches to help me get better. I make them questions. And I'm, I'm, a look, I'm always in a search for getting better because it's so easy to just get comfy with what you have. That's not me. If I'm running 13 miles... I put up to 14, and then I go to 15, and then I'm always going up, 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 because it's easy to get comfy in the in the same place. I'm I'm never comfy. I'm I'm, I'm always I'm always tired, and I always I'm I always not putting in the good work, and that goes with the hand with the recovery too. My recovery is great too. I, I use a lot of uh, tools that help me recover, and you know just make sure I'm, I can keep up with my training because I'm gonna push myself harder than any other day the following day there's a science to it right there is it and you need to make questions you need to do research you know that's why i have a nutritionist that's why i have a boxing coach i have a kickboxing coach i have a jiu-jitsu coach a wrestling coach i have a mind coach and i have one guy for every single area and they do a great job i love the work they do for me and we have all we have great relationships so it's all about that it's all about like just finding the best around you to become the best and it's been working so far so good really looking forward to this fight last thing before we let you go uh, i don't want to keep you too too much from your family but uh did you have a chance to watch mike tyson versus roy jones on saturday night and if so what did oh, you think of it that was awful but good for <laughs> them and good money that was uh that was awful but they're making i heard they're making a big checks and it was for the charity so good for the whole cast but this is not a sport for all people. We all know that. They're, I respect them, their legs. I'm a fan of, of them. Of course, I'm not a really boxing fan, so I'm not like I'm not gonna fake. I don't I don't even know who they fought. I just probably know one or two fights they had. But I'm an MMA guy. But you know that wasn't that wasn't a good fight. That was a good that was a good sparring session. But be good. At, but for what I hear, the charity thing and. I'm sure people get the help for that. That, that, that. That's a noble cause. So I respect and I appreciate that. But the fight was awful. <laughs> <laughs> How did you react to the draw? Like, did it surprise you at all? Well, I, I really, from from what I understand, I understand. I don't think I'm making this up, but I I thought when you do uh, both guys get the half race, so. Like, actually, I thought Tyson did a little more. Like, in my eyes, he could win the decision. But when you do an exhibition match, there's a winner. It's an exhibition match. It's two-minute rounds. Two minutes. <laughs> the greatest boxer of minutes are 40, 50 years old. I don't know. I don't even know that. But that was funny. Hey, but again, good for them. They make a lot of money. Well said. 
Well, Marlon, I appreciate the time, man. I'm very excited you're getting a, a fight of this caliber to wrap up the year. And uh, it's been an interesting year for us all and a very good year for you, despite how it began and where we're at right now. So wish you all the best, man. Good luck in the rest of training and uh, best of luck on December 19th against Jose Aldo. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, thanks for everything. Absolutely. Good talking to you again. There he is, Marlon Chito Vera. Always appreciate his time. What a personality he is. What a year it has been for him. And it's going to be a really interesting 2021 if he can get a win over Jose Aldo. That'll be unbelievable. And it, it, one of the things I really enjoy about this job is it is always great to talk to the fighters about fighting and they're in their element. Sometimes like you get fighters while they're in their gym after practice or something. But I always enjoy when they are kind of being regular guys and gals, like doing everyday things outside of fighting. Like Marlon Vera, he has this huge fight. You would think he's in the gym training. And honestly, I'm surprised they even got the opportunity to interview him because it's such a big fight. But he's out driving around with his wife, picking up his kids at school. Just, I love that stuff. I love that stuff. It's just, it's just really great. And I really love that fight on December 19th. Should be a good one at 135 pounds. Pe- speaking of parents in MMA and the Vera last name, of course, Joining the show for the first time is Brandon Vera, the one heavyweight champion. I will, I will say ahead of time, there's not a lot of different camera angles in this conversation. Like normally go from like the split screen shot to like the single shot. In fact, I don't think there's any transitions at all. So I I hope you guys are cool with that because we did this chat on zoom. I'm still trying to like work out the intricacies of zoom because the quality, especially like with the video, it's just not as good as Skype. Skype is my go-to There's other things that we use as well. Zoom obviously is a very popular thing in 2020 with the pandemic, but still learning it. Sometimes the quality isn't great, especially if you zoom in on Zoom. I'm done saying Zoom, but listen, you don't really care about the technical crap. It just is what it is. This is a great interview though. Really enjoyed it with the one heavyweight champ, Brandon Vera. All right, we have the reigning defending one championship heavyweight champ. Brandon the Truth Bearer on the program. You can catch him, hopefully, defending his title soon. But in the meantime, you'll be able to catch him on the Apprentice One Championship Edition in the near future. Brandon, how are you, sir? I'm very, very good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So one thing I wanted to touch on right off the bat, I saw a few months back that you became a father. Congratulations to to you and the family. And the, the way you described it, those first moments of seeing your child coming into the world, it brought me back around seven years or so when my son was born, I had the same exact reaction you had. There's just no better feeling on earth than that, right? That's very cool. Thank you very much. I'm smiling so big. Yeah, man. Like it's, I don't know how to describe it, man. Like, yeah, it's, it's just, man, if you can, you have to experience it. If you can, you have to, it's, it's amazing, man. Congratulations on your baby seven years ago. I know it's crazy, (laughs) right? Wow. (laughs) I know he was yelling and screaming at me this morning before I took him to school. So I have to, I have to remember those, those nicer days where you know what I mean? and you'll at some point, but uh, how have you, uh, how have you been enjoying fatherhood thus far? I man, I love it. I love hanging out with him. I love all of it. I don't like changing poopy pampers. Nobody <laughs> does. That's part of the gig. Other than that, man, he's, Shit, man, he is awesome. Like, we lose hours just hanging out with him, like just listening to him talk, watching what he's doing. Like, I'm like, man, I should be doing something else. Like, no, I don't really have to be doing anything else right now. So, <laughs> and we just lose time with him, hanging out with him. It's really, really cool. It's the best, man. It's the best. It's a good sleeper, dude. He he just uh. So he started becoming a good sleeper. Then he went through this little thing for two weeks where he wasn't. And now he's sleeping again, like six to eight hours through the night now again. Wow. It's crazy. So yeah, he's a good sleeper. Yeah, he's just going through, I guess, you know, they go through different patterns. Yeah. Yeah, the the teething and then there's the the growing pain. (laughs) Oh, God bless you. Just all sorts of, all sorts of fun stuff to look forward to. But congratulations to that, uh, to you, of course. But this has just been a wild year overall. So in, in a wild year, yeah. that, that was obviously a great blessing. But like we stated at the top, you're going to be part of the Apprentice One Championship Edition, along with names such as, to name a few, Demetrius Johnson, Ben Askren, George St. Pierre, and many others. 
I know you've been doing some filming already. How have you been enjoying it? And are you able to discuss your role on the program? So I'm pretty sure I can tell you guys I am a mentor slash coach on, uh, on the program. I don't think I can talk much more about that other than the challenges are awesome. The questions that they ask and have to answer are awesome. Man, I learned a lot being on that show. Filming was a breeze. It was the film crew in Singapore, the one, the one championship edition for The Apprentice. Those guys are class A. The contestants, they're all cool and they all have their own quirky little thing about them. Man, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It, it was fun. It was really, really fun. I'm glad I got to be a part of that. I can't believe the plethora of superstars they had guesting on the show and, and doing that. So it was it was really cool to see. And it's really cool to see uh, maybe normal people, I guess you could say, working through the physical aspect before they have to go do the mental aspect. That's cool. That's really, really cool. So I'm, I'm really excited to watch this, uh, this one championship edition of The Apprentice. Did you think when you, when you got into the sport and, and, and started evolving in your career that someday in, in, in 2020 or sometime in your career, you'd be, <laughs> you'd, be part, you'd be mentoring in a reality show that's like not just about <laughs> MMA, but the business world and all sorts of other th stuff like that? I, no, short answer, no. <laughs> what what do what <laughs> yeah it, none of this yeah none of this made sense none of this made mathematically made sense you know you're not supposed to do this and end up here over here but things have changed times have changed and uh i guess Dwayne the rock johnson he was the first one to do it big from the sports world moving into the entertainment industry you know so I guess a lot of people have got to follow him and it's, there's a lot more opportunities now. You, you need action heroes. You don't have to go train nobody. You don't have to fake anything. You, you have action heroes all over the place, ready to go jump off buildings and do fight scenes in two takes instead of 80. You know, it's, it's really cool. Every, the whole world's leveling up and it's nice to be able to have these different opportunities, you know, thank you one championship. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you will take it. Uh, sp speaking of one and, and speaking of your fighting career, we haven't seen you compete since the loss to Angla a, a little over a year ago. You were scheduled to face uh, Arjun Buller in May, I believe, before that event was canceled due to the pandemic. And, you know, you've obviously had a lot of things going on this year with The Apprentice becoming a dad at all. And you fought like once a year or so for the last several years. So how has... Brandon Vera, the fighter, the heavyweight champion, how have you dealt with this with this crazy year? You know, um, so after the loss to Champ Angla, I was going to be competing two times a year. That's what I want to do. Uh, pandemic hit, the world went upside down. <laughs> so really the world has been just moving at my pace. Instead of me competing twice this year, I'll just be doing one this year. You know, again, like, it'll be a year and a half, I believe, when we finally get back in. But it's my normal pace. This is what I've been doing anyways my entire career. So I'm on track for how I've been doing. I just want to to be more active and, and finishing up. I want to go ahead and burn the candle at both ends and get them all in now, especially with all the recent signings for one championship. I know there's a lot of guys chomping at the bit to get in there with me, and I, I want to make it happen. So, you know, but can I really complain about anything? For all the stuff that's happened in the world and and people that have lost everything from their life savings to their houses, to the families, to some people, their lives, you know, I, I, I have no right to complain or bitch and moan about anything. So I just take it in stride, stay in shape. Uh, we stay sharpening the sword, and we stay stay ready to get ready. My next match will be with Mr. Arjun Buller. Um, we are competing. We already have the contract signed, a date scheduled, ready to go before all of this hit. And I'm hoping and expecting to fight uh, 
first quarter of the year, 21. I have I have a movie to finish in the Philippines and I have some endorsement stuff to finish up still that we were actually shooting and got the call of the lockdown while we were on set. So Oh really? We were in yeah, so we're in we still have a bunch of stuff to finish that that the world stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's excited to see me uh compete and get back in and I, I love it, but I still have stuff to finish. You know, my timeline didn't change just because the world's timeline changed. And it, it's a hard balance. So we have to make sure that uh, that everything is like this. Being a dad, though, that I don't think I have to balance that. He just is with me all the time. So it's okay. At the gym, in the gym, wherever. He's just there with me. So it's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Is uh, So it's the first quarter you're thinking? Yeah, I'm thinking March, April. March, okay. April is what I'm thinking just because – we have to finish that movie, man. I have to finish that damn movie. <laughs> <laughs> what movie? What movie is it? Can you talk about man. it? Man, <laughs> man. It, so the movie is about a virus. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. What the hell? <laughs> oh man. Do you have so, a lot left to finish? Because you know more. Probably you probably have so much. You know, you have so much knowledge with it now, you could probably just walk in there and just knock it out of the park. You know, it's a, it's an action movie. So we had, before the shutdown, we had probably like six days left to film. But now because we've had time, they got to add more stuff. The trailer looks amazing. Like I cannot wait to see the movie myself. Just as a fan, like I'm just watching like, that's me. Ooh, wow. Like, I'm just watching the action scenes and, like, it's a, zo it's a zombie movie. It starts from a virus. So I'm excited to film it. It was six days left, but now with everything that's happening, they got to write more. It's probably going to be, like, 10 days, 15 days left to film. So I'm, I'm just excited to get started and finish that project still again. <laughs> right. You you mentioned some interesting additions to the to the roster. Tom DeBlas, Amir uh, uh, Ali Akbari makes his one debut on Friday. Marcus Almeida, yes, he's signed as well. Hold on, and, see, uh, so for people like me, you say Marcus Almeida. I had no idea who Marcus Almeida was until somebody off on the side said, "Hey, that's Bachecha." <gasps> oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's how that's how much of a fanboy I am of his. You know, I don't even know his real name. I just know Bucetta. <laughs> that's so funny. So that was been a great signing. And then immediately Ali Akbari started calling for you right away. Like the ink hadn't even dried on his one contract yet. And already he's <laughs> making social media images of you guys side by side, fight posters and such. You gotta respect the gusto, right? Why? Why not? Shooting for the stars. Yeah, let him shoot. He hasn't got here yet. He's not even off the. He's not even on the ground yet. Get your first one in. Get your feet wet. Then, then I'll hang out with you, <laughs> bro. You better respect the heavyweights in front of you. you. Better stop worrying about me. This one championship. This isn't. This isn't some little other rinky-dink organization that, that they hooked you up. You could get hooked up here, and fall asleep. So <laughs> make sure you're paying attention who's in front of you first. So yeah, him calling me out and wanting to do all that stuff, it's like uh it's like Connor to me again. It sounds like Connor all over again. Bro, just do what you have to do first. And now we're gonna meet up. If you're that good, we're gonna meet up. I promise we're gonna meet up. <laughs> it's what's interesting about like kind of the, the spot he's in because like you said with Connor, like if you go out there and you talk that greasiness and you back it up, you can become a star very quickly in this sport. But if you go out there and talk the greases and lose or get stopped, fans like to play the point and ha ha game. And yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Our fans love us and hate us at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's part of the game. But you know, when you, when you claim to be the biggest alpha, the best alpha in the world, and you're the best warrior in the world, that's what they expect that day, you know? I get it. That's part of the gig. That's what we signed up for. It's not just, it's not just the good days. You got to take all the bad days with it. So man, I'm excited for all of the matches coming up. Like I'm really, really excited. 
and he just happens to be one of them. I think I uh, I was playing a game, and I think I ranked him number two in in the division under Arjun. So, man, if you're that good, we're gonna meet each other anyways. <laughs> but you gotta get that. He's gotta get that first one out of the way. He's gotta win on Friday, right? Get that first one out of the way. Stop worrying about me. <laughs> Stop yeah. worrying. Don't worry about what's in front of you. <laughs> I mean, look at a like look at a guy like Jake Paul, right? YouTuber, running his mouth, just calling out Connor, calling out Floyd, yeah. Yeah. Ben Askren, Masvidal, all these folks, and people want to see him lose. And then he yeah. goes out there and flatlines Nate Robinson, Nate. which listen isn't the it is what it is, but everybody's talking about him. Did you watch that on Saturday, by the way? Yeah, I saw it. it just whoever is sanctioning that fight for Jake Paul, they need to get in trouble. Like, cause those aren't professional athletes, you know, and they're taking big hits. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like that's not a professional sport when they're treating it like one. So if they're going to treat it like one, you need to be competing against some professionals then, Mr. Jake Paul, and find out what it's really like. Uh, I have my own opinions of that guy anyways, of that kid. Um, it is what it is. It's entertainment, you know, it's, it's all entertainment. So I'm glad that he's doing what he's doing, but be careful what you ask for. <laughs> That's my advice for everybody. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of uh, of Tyson Jones? I, Dude, I thought it was a lot of fun, man. I enjoyed I it. Thought, I thought it was so – I thought it was so cool, man. It was like watching – it was like watching a master class on boxing. And, you know, everybody was talking shit about – Roy Jones Jr. Sorry, I'm cussing. But Roy Jones okay. Jr. Uh, being tired after the second round. Like, come on, man. Even if he was tired after the second round, he still would beat 99.99% of y'all into the ground. <laughs> and with that happening, it was beautiful to watch both of the athletes do their thing. Like, um, Roy, Mr. Jones Jr. got, he, he still hit Tyson with a no-look jab. He got to move around a lot. He got to make Tyson miss. He tied him up a lot. And then Mr. Mike Tyson still doing it. Man. So this is a no knockout event, you know, which I think makes a lot of sense. Those guys are, those guys have proven themselves. Like what's it called? The legends league. I, I would oh, love yeah. to see something like that. Those guys have proven themselves. They don't need to be tough no more, but the techniques that those guys could show and the styles and the footwork and the head movement and the, the fancy stuff they can do during the exhibition about Tyson showed the world that he can still do Tyson. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then be, and then he was doing the reverse, the reverse hook angle on both sides. I was like, Oh my God, man, this guy could kill somebody. I think if it was a boxing match. Mr. Roy Jones was definitely unprepared for that. If that would have been a fight, Tyson would have knocked him out. I think. But to see both of them be able to work and move and do their thing, it was, it was a blessing, you know. It was a blessing for, for us old school heads who've been watching them since back in the day before they retired. And then it's a blessing for the new kids on the block who have no idea what real boxing is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you definitely got flashbacks. You know what I mean? Like this, going back and watching like some of those old training videos with, with, with Coos and yeah. stuff, man. <laughs> Throwing those hooks. It was just gnarly to, to go in there and watch and – I, I don't know. Like, I think everyone's expectations were so all over the place that <laughs> it, it was just, it was just so fun to watch. Like I, I, I didn't care that it was a draw at the end of the day. I didn't care about any of that. I was, I, those guys got to go in there and move around. And I think, I think Brandon, that that Mike Tyson that we saw on Saturday beats the Mike Tyson from 2005. I think he's better. More cares can, more. I don't I know. Can, I can agree with that. I'm not going to say physically. Like, if you took that young ass Mike Tyson, oh my God. Oh, the, the, the guy for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my God. But yeah, I think emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and I think this Mike Tyson is way more mature and would have kept the world as his oyster as opposed to young, younger Tyson who, who was still fighting his way, you know, who's still still becoming that man. So it was it was good to see. It was really cool. And for me, like, I didn't expect a fight. I just expected a show. And it was a good show. People got hit. They were they were getting lit up still once in a while. It would be a good jab come through or a good box. I remember uh, Tyson got one in and was like, oh, 
<laughs> yeah, that was a good one. In the seventh round, I think. Landed right to the body. Yeah, that was yeah. you so, could I mean, hear the were, thumps. Yeah, it was yeah. good. They were still giving it to each other, you know. It's <clears throat> sorry, it's like hard sparring. So it was really, really cool to see. Man, both of them got to show off. It was cool. Both of them got to do their thing still. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Did you did, did you enjoy Snoop on the on the desk? I didn't see Snoop on the desk, actually. I um I only saw the fight from round one to round eight. Jake Paul, I saw the last round on a on his on his clip. So I didn't see Snoop on the desk at all. I didn't see any You didn't hear him you didn't hear him at all? No, sir, I did not. Uh-uh. Oh, good for you, man. Listen, I, I, <laughs> I liked him in the, in the Jake Paul, Nate Robinson fight. I thought it was fine. Like you, you were in there, you did your thing. Like him on the contender series, hated it. Could not stand. Uh-huh. It was terrible. Uh-huh. Him in that spot made sense. Like in a celebrity boxing match, Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson. Perfect. Then he performed for like 14 minutes, like all of his hits. It just seemed like it was just forever and oh. ever. And yeah, it was crazy. And then he joins Mauro sugar ray and israel adesanya in the in the booth and call is calling the main event too like i was just i was snooped out at that point you know what i mean oh yeah like his show he's trying to be he's trying to be like the new ryan seacrest (laughs) 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 yeah that's a lot of snoop man that's a lot it's a lot of snoop whoa it's a lot man it's not even a movie. It's just a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sporting event. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I-, I wanted to get your take on something before we let you go. I appreciate you giving me so much time. We're just shooting the breeze no here. Worries. But uh, I saw, uh, we- we've, I'm sure you've seen it as well, an old opponent of yours is making the move up to the heavyweight division, John Jones. Vacated the light heavyweight title. Now he's focused on this new challenge. What are your thoughts on that? And how do you think he stacks up against the uh, – the Stipe's, the Nganu's, maybe the Brandon Veras of the world in 2020, 2021. I think that if John Jones puts his mind together and gets his, man, I guess really just his brain, gets his mind right, he, he could still be a force to reckon with. He's always dangerous inside the inside of the the circle or wherever he's fighting, the octagon, or but man, he just he can't stop being John Jones, and that's the problem. You know, he could do so much more for the world if he could figure that part out, and that kind of it makes me sad about him, man, because this this kid, man, he can do he could do so much for the world if he would just stop being that guy i don't even know how to say it you know like he's just being that guy him moving up to heavyweight is is definitely a cool cool thing uh i would absolutely love to do a super fight at heavyweight i would absolutely love that i welcome it um he's faster than the guys at heavyweight but heavyweights hit a little bit different. <laughs> when they win, when they hit you, even if you block, even if you move out the way, even if you take some off, it stings just a little bit more. It was like, oh, heavyweights are slow. Okay, they're slow until they touch you one time. Then you slow down. Then they touch you again. Oh, you slow down again. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a good, uh, a good move for him. Entertaining for the fans, for sure if he can keep it together. Yeah. I think one thing we sort of learned from Mike Tyson through this whole thing is that it's never too late. It's never too late to get it together. Cause that man yeah. has gone through so much in his life and like even just physically and emotionally too, over the last probably like five or six years. And just to see like the physical and mental shape he got himself in to prepare yeah. himself for this fight. It was outstanding. Yep. Yeah, man. It, you know, it's never ever too late. And man, what's your excuse? It's, it's Mike Tyson, man. Fucking Mike Tyson. Your life was not as hard as this guy's. You didn't go through all the, the bullshit that he went through. You didn't have somebody rob you at, at the point, the peak of your career. You didn't have people trying to fight you for lawsuits. Like, dude, your life is nowhere near as, as hard 
as what that guy went through. So, man, like you said, it is possible. You can get it back together. You just need to want to get it together. And maybe it's just too many yes men around that guy. I don't know if that's what it is. And I don't know. Maybe he needs a new group of friends. It happens, you know? It happens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would be very interesting to see you and John fight over a decade later. That would be, uh, Dude, that'd be uh, fascinating. I would absolutely love – I would love and welcome that, you know. He he definitely taught me something that day. He taught me a lot about myself. I would love – I got goosebumps just thinking about that. <laughs> what did he teach you? Like, what sticks out? What kind of sticks uh, out at the top of the list there? Always be humble. Always. I remember when we were on our feet, we were, we were dancing. He couldn't touch me on my feet. I remember just moving stuff out the way of pairing and just slipping out the way. And I remember the look of panic on his face. I'm telling the interview, Jones, you can, you, can tell, you can tell the story how you want. I remember your eyes. I remember how you look. And then uh, he shot it and took me down. I was like, man, you're supposed to be this, this amazing stand-up guy. Why would you take me down? I was like, man, this guy is horrible. And I remember I just boot kicked him off me and stood back up. I was like, man, you can't even hold me on the ground. Man, this guy. And so we start, I start dancing even more. Like, oh, I'm going to. I'm gonna start whooping this guy's ass like I can. I start feeling. I start feeling myself on on the feet, you know. But this guy doesn't want, he wants nothing to do with it. He's just moving away. He's supposed to be this this the what I say second coming of Jesus Christ and he's supposed to be really good at, at this. Come on, man, let's do this. And then he took me down again. And I remember thinking like this guy. Listen, while I'm on my back, this guy's trying to work on top of me. And I'm just pummeling with him like this guy. Everybody thinks that this guy's that good. He throws an elbow, I move out the way. Like, come on, man. And in my head, I said, man, this guy fucking. And right when I got the first S out, what? That's when he elbowed me on my face and broke my face. And when I turned, I grabbed my face and turned belly down. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, what the hell was that? And I was sitting there holding my face. And I'd never felt nothing like that before. Even to this day, I've, like all the injuries and all the surgery and stuff, never had no pain like that before. It wasn't an orbital fracture. It was a tripod fracture. So my face broke here, here, and here. Like this whole bone caved in. And as I'm holding my face and I'm, I'm like thinking, what the hell was that? Next thought was, that's what you get. That's what you get, asshole. That's what you get for being so cocky. That's what you get for talking shit during a fight. That's what you get for thinking too much of yourself. So thanks, Mr. Jones. That's something I definitely learned and have never, ever forgotten to this day. So I, I take that with me all the time. You know, I've no matter how the match is going, in less than a second, <laughs> it can go the other way. <laughs> It can go the other way mid thought, man. <laughs> you gave me chills just like you telling that story. It was just wild to to get your your, your side of that because I think this is the first time you and I have chatted, and I've, I got to tell you, this will not be the last time because I have enjoyed this very much. But uh, before we before thank we get you, to John Jones you. super fights or anything like that, our John Buller is first. Hopefully, we see yep. you back that happen. You know, March April like like it's planned sooner rather than later. I think everyone wants to see it at this point, but uh. Again, congrats on fatherhood, Brandon. Happy holidays. All the best to you and the family, man. I appreciate the time today. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. You guys stay awesome. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Good having Brandon Vera on the show. Big shout out to One for making that happen. But seriously, the, the stuff with John Jones and about John Jones was amazing. Like Hearing him go through that fight from over a decade ago, just step by step, the trash talk, the build up to that fight. Cause that the build to that fight was absolutely insane. It was nuts. Like go back, go back in time, whether it's on ESPN Plus or Fight Pass, try to find that one. Jones versus Vera from UFC on versus one. Such a wild build up. Brandon Vera is like on another level there. And then in the fight too, like everything he talked about in the fight and just how much that that loss changed him and the elbow that he took from John Jones that basically changed the path of his career and how he approached fights. It's just really so fascinating. Just amazing stuff from Brandon Vera. He expects his next title defense against Arjun Bular to go down first quarter 2021, March or April. 
and that should be a really fun fight for the one heavyweight strap. We do have one more interview to get to, but at this point, we're going to wrap up the, I guess, kind of segmented portion of the program. First off, the usual shout out to all of you crazy MMA fans who check this program out every week, whether it be on YouTube or on the podcast network. It just, it just means a lot. A lot of you are shouting from the rooftops. Let's get those numbers up. Let's get those numbers up. I appreciate that. Share it. Let the peeps know. I feel like we're doing a hell of a job here. We're all doing it together. We're 36 episodes in, and it seems like just yesterday we did episode one from my old office upstairs. There's just, we had the big desk, the camera, and then we had like the entire room behind me with like two posters. It was just kind of a weird setup, but you guys stuck with it. Your comments were read. We got Command Center 2.0 set up. Still a work in progress. The background, kind of cool. I know some of you have questions about the cards in the background. It's really cool. One day I'll show you guys what those are. But it really is pretty cool to see. These are boxing cards. They're like tobacco cards. Like if you bought a pack of cigarettes in the 1930s, you would get these cards. And these are like full sets. One's from 1938. I think they're both from 1938. But some of the the, the legends, the OGs of the boxing game are all over it. But one, one of these days I'll go back and, and check that out. But I'm, I'm rambling here. Anyways, thank you all. Big thank you to the birthday boy, Jose Youngs. Make sure you wish him a happy belated birthday on social media. And of course, Alex Savas for their help on the graphics and me bugging them each and every day for different things. Can you do this? Can you do this? And they never, they never bat an eye and it means a lot. But in the meantime, we will leave you with my chat with the number 15th ranked flyweight contender in the UFC. She's going to take on Talia Santos this Saturday at UFC Vegas 15, Montana De La Rosa will join us as we say goodbye. Have a heck of a week, everybody. All right, we have Montana De La Rosa joining the program. She returns to action this Saturday night at UFC Vegas 16 and will face Talia Santos at the Apex in Las Vegas. Montana, how are you? I'm doing great. Can't wait for this weekend. It should be a, a very entertaining card. Thank you for doing this so close to the fight, by the way. I appreciate it. First off, how was Thanksgiving? I, I'm sure you weren't able to uh, to partake in the festivities as much as you maybe would in previous years, but it's always nice to reflect and spend time with family. How did you enjoy the holiday? Uh, yeah, I just had my sister come down and kind of went to my went to my parents' house, ate a little bit of turkey, nothing else. But yeah, it was fun hanging out with them and just being around my daughter and family. And it's always good to get together with my family. Absolutely. Especially this year where it's so hard to, to travel and, and get together with anybody right now. Right. Yeah. A lot of people are going through it. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to have my family here. Absolutely. So we confirmed you were taking this fight around 11 or so days ago as we record right now. When did you know that this fight was a thing and that then Penn went to paper? Um, they told me about three weeks ago. So I had a good three week camp um yeah they they announced it really late it was kind of weird but i was like itching to announce it but i had to wait till they like officially announced it oh interesting okay yeah sometimes they do that normally we get the, the stuff out right away but but here we are so it wasn't so it wasn't like a super short training camp not as not what you would probably like or would would rather yeah. go with but still it's more than like than we than maybe we thought it was yeah, and I was training already really hard. I was actually hoping to get a fight like early December, so I was I was glad when they gave it to me. I immediately said yes. So we last saw you compete a couple of months ago. You took on Viviani Araujo, and you know the fight didn't go your way, but you showed a lot of toughness in that fight. So I guess silver lining wise, what were you able to take from that fight, just being on despite being on the wrong side of the decision? Um, it's just always good getting in there with high level girls like that she was super tough hit really probably was one of the hardest hitters that i've ever gone against she hit, she hit super hard um and i was able to strike with her the whole time i really wanted to show my striking in that fight so i feel like i was able to do that and just get better and learn from it yeah i was gonna say because i mean you definitely showed a lot of improvement in that aspect you seem to have a lot more confidence in your stand-up and you had your moments in the fight you were landing some hard shots of your own is it just a comfort thing for you? Because it did seem like, you know, you were you were evolving in the striking game. You wanted to show it, but you seemed a lot more comfortable in there on your feet than maybe you were in your previous fights. Yeah, just getting more and more confidence in the cage. I was doing like a lot of uh, working on my mind and trying to just trying to be super confident in there like I am during training. Like it's always hard to get that out of me when I'm actually in, in the cage because it's, it's just so 
so different being in, in that cage in front of all those people. So I think just working on my mind and stuff really helped me bring out the confidence and helped me showcase my skills better. What sort of things did you do specifically to, to help work on your mind and improve that aspect? Um, just lately working a lot with my coach, uh, Elliot Marshall and just journaling and reading books and yeah, all that <laughs> reading books. What kind of, what kind of books? Um, just like, uh, audio books, you know, mindset books. So you feel like you're in a much better place now that you've been able to, to write your thoughts down and then listen to some different things as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel a lot more confident getting into the cage now. So you started off the year with, with the win over Mara Barella and then COVID struck and it's just been kind of a whirlwind since then. Like even like this fight, you found out three weeks ago that you're getting a fight at the end of the year, three fights in a year struck by a pandemic. Did you think back in March that we'd even be having that conversation? Yeah. I mean, well, I guess everyone kind of thought that the pandemic would be a lot quicker. Like I thought we'd be over it by the time um, like August came around, but it just kept lingering on and lingering on. But I'm really glad the UFC is still putting on the fights. Cause I mean, that's how we make our money. So I mean, it, I'm just grateful for that because I know a lot of people couldn't make money during the shutdown and I was able to get three fights this year. So it's it, it's been a really good year for me. So you're going to face Talia Santos on Saturday, her third UFC fight. She had the loss to Mara in her first fight, but she bounced back with a really nice win over Molly McCann on Fight Island. And that was one that certainly surprised some folks, not, not just because she won the fight, but many people thought if this fight went to the ground, this is Molly McCann's world. And it turned out that wasn't the case at all. How do you like this matchup from a stylistic perspective, especially after what we saw in the, her, her win over Molly McCann? Yeah, I mean, she she was able to show how good she is everywhere, really. I'm just excited to get in there and showcase my skills. And, yeah, I just think it's a really good matchup. I mean, yeah, she's she's no slouch anywhere, so it'll be a good night. You mentioned Elliot Marshall. I know you spent – a lot of your last camp with Elevation Fight Team, six or so weeks or so you spent out there, a little more difficult to put together this time around, I would assume, with the short notice, but how have you sort of navigated the waters for this particular camp? So I was going to go up to Colorado, but Elevation Fight Team had a whole bunch of COVID cases. Like, they were just popping up everywhere. So he's like, you know what, stay home, stay with your coaches. And he, I was just Zoom calling him, like, every day, and we were just, like, going over game plan and – just he was just has been a really big help for the whole camp even not being uh in the same state as him so i've been working with eric sands my wrestling coach and that's been going really good and i always have my husband here mark de la rosa and then yeah just having him to be able to zoom call me and go over game plan and stuff has been great when did you start working with El with elevation um so i was i think i started going out there in the summer so around like june and i would i would, went for a few weeks and then i went another couple weeks and then i decided to have my <clears throat> fight camp there when my fight was announced so i got a good seven weeks there before my last fight was that always kind of the plan or like the first trip did you go out there and just be like oh, let me just see what this is like it's a little bit different and then it just kind of grew on you yeah i just kind of wanted to fill it out see if i clicked with the coaches and see how the training partners were and stuff Shauna Dobson had a lot of great things to say about you um, <laughs> before her last fight. She said that she worked with you extensively and getting to work with you and taking punches and being worked on the ground really helped her and her, her win over Maria Agapova. And we saw what that did for her and kind of launched her in a different way. People got to see how good she really was. How fun was that to work with her and then to watch her have a win like that? Oh, it was awesome. I don't think I've ever been like more excited for somebody. Like I was so happy when she got that win. Um, yeah, I've been working with her. I've known her for a while now, ever since I started fighting and she, cause she was down here in Texas and then we were actually on the ultimate fighter together. And then she's kind of how I got clicked up with elevation. Cause I messaged her and I'm like, where are you training at these days? And she, she told me about them and I decided to go over there and try it with her. I saw on your Instagram, a photo of you and Lauren Murphy. And I know Lauren is, can be pretty active on social media. She's all over your posts, shouting you out and giving you some good vibes. How important, how great has that been to, to work with her, especially with the tear that she's been on? Oh yeah. She's like about to get a title shot. So just having her come and spar me has been amazing. Like if I can hang with her and we're getting good rounds in the cage, then I mean, I'm going to be confident to go with anyone in my division. Yeah, she's she's an interesting case because she is like 
the definition of, of adversity because she was at 135. She, she overcame some, some really tough controversial decisions, which a lot of people thought went her way. She had her ups and downs, but now she's finally like found her groove. She's in Texas now back with her old team and things are really clicking like right now. So being able to pick her brain, not just about fighting, but just about like life itself. How beneficial has that been for you? Oh yeah. She has like a great mindset all the time. Like she is super tough. Uh, she's just great to be around. She's always positive and yeah, I just couldn't be more grateful to have her like come help me. And what a good time to be in this division because there is a, a lot of interest in it right now with Valentina and then there's multiple people like Lauren, like Jessica Andrade. They're both right there in the title picture and then you get Cynthia Calvillo there and Caitlin Chukagan and it just seems like 125 is as interesting as it has ever been. Have you noticed that as well? And if so, how excited does that make you for, for your fighting future in this division? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just want to keep getting there, getting in there and getting the wins. Um, I mean, I'm not looking to too far forward into like title or anything, but I just want to keep getting in there and getting my wins and just see where it takes me. Well, you have a chance to get another win on Saturday, the number 15th ranked fighter in the world taking on Talia Santos, who would love nothing more than to put that number next to her name. So uh, how do you get this thing done on Saturday? How does this all play out Saturday night in Las Vegas? I'm going to go in there and be super aggressive and just do my best to get my hand raised at the end. We're going to see more of that stand-up game? Uh, Yeah, you'll see. Very (laughs) well-rounded. There we go. There we go. Well, I appreciate the time very much. When are you heading out? Tomorrow? Uh, Yep, tomorrow morning. There you go. Well, I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you for the time. Anything else you want to get off your chest before we say goodbye? Uh, No, I don't think so. Okay. (laughs) Well, thank you, Montana. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. You're listening to the Vox Media Podcast Network.